Hey, it's time to show you how I do pointillism with the digital platform called Procreate. And uh, the picture I did today is uh, a picture of um, a river near where I live. It's called the Rainbow River. And I did this digitally using the dry brush on point on, on uh, Procreate. And I did it in a pointillistic way. In other words, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of dots. Lots of dots. All right. Oh, sorry. I'm shaking my camera. Let's turn this around and show you. And I'll tell you. I'll narrate this. And uh, here we go. All right. Uh, well, there's the finished picture. It's kind of close up and uh, kind of looks like a mess right there, doesn't it? So uh, let's back off. Yeah, this is done in a pointillistic way. And um, you will see what I mean um, as the video unfolds. This, of course, is time lapse. And the uh, brush I'm using is the dry brush, and I, I roughed in a line. That was just to have some reference point to where the water edge um, was up with against the land in the distance. And the rest of it is dots, um, dots with a dry brush. So the dots don't look like the dots you would do, for example, with a, a pen, uh, where there would be a, a defined dot. These are more dots as if you had um, let's say a house brush, maybe a, a one inch house brush or two inch, one and a half or something. And you're just dabbing the paint onto the canvas one dot at a time. Um, the first thing I'm doing obviously is laying down um, some reference points, uh, the water's edge, the light coming through the trees um, in across the river, which you really can't tell that yet, but, but that's what it is. And um, it was just a kind of a long process uh, to do pointillism, if, even with a, a pen. I have a video on my channel showing uh, pointillism with a pen that I did um, previously. Um, it's the same idea, except the fact that this is digital, so there's no uh, actual ink. It's all pixels. And the, also the idea that it, the, uh, the point, as I mentioned already, is not really a point. It's more of a dab of a brush. Um, the, the river is called the Rainbow River, and um, I wanted to make sure that I included all the colors of the rainbow in the picture. So it's a little bit um, creative license, I guess you would say. I used a little bit of creative license to add, um, uh, you know, the red, orange, uh, was it red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Um, but they're all in there. I, I put them in, uh, not at this point, they're not in there, but um, they're in there. Kind of a, a subliminal or just a, a hidden thing, I guess. You'd have to look for them. Um, so this particular, the, the reference photo I'm using is a photo I took um, on, at the edge of the Rainbow River on the shore or the riverbank, if you will. Um, and there was a live oak, large live oak tree with Spanish moss draped all over it and uh, creating lots of, of shade, lots of um, shadows at the, at the foot of it, on the sand below it, um, giving it a dappled light look, which I, I always like, the dappled light look. And um, just took one, one little area at a time and, and uh, painted what I could see and um, didn't worry about replicating it exactly as, as a photograph. Some, sometimes I have a tendency to, to do that. And, um, you know, I have mixed feelings about that. Sometimes they look really super good. And other times I think, well, why did I do it that way? I should have just, I should have just posted a photograph online or, or you know, published a photograph. But, you know, the idea of painting uh, it goes way back, and so early painters, before there was photography, had to paint in such a way that pleased the person who was going to get the painting. Usually the painters were not the wealthy ones. They were the ones painting for the wealthy, the kings and, and emperors and things like that. Um, so they had to do the best they could trying to replicate a, a real-life look, which is why we have so many great, amazing pieces of art from days gone by. But then once photography came into being, artists were freed from that. They didn't any longer have to um, create paintings that looked like photographs. They could create paintings that had a, a look of their own, a painterly look, 
if you will. And so in today's world, we're, we're sort of caught. I, th I think when I first started drawing, uh, I always tried to create things that looked real. Um, then when you look at other people's work, Robin included, um, was very impressionistic in her paintings. And, and I've started looking at people like Van Gogh and Monet and, and the other well-known names of, of, um, of impressionism. And then pointillism somehow uh, became part of my understanding of, of how painting can be done. And so I guess you would say this is a pointillism slash impressionism uh, painting of the Rainbow River. The Rainbow River, by the way, is uh, a river I have a long history with. I, uh, I didn't grow up in this area. I grew up in New York. However, um, when I was a kid in New York, my grandparents moved from Connecticut down to this area of Florida. And so as a kid, my parents would come down here and take us on a vacation and sometimes leave us for a couple of weeks with our grandparents. And uh, my grandfather would take us to this place called the KP Hole, which is a swimming area on the Rainbow River. And then in uh, 1972, I was 17 years old. My, my dad retired from the police force and we moved to Florida and the Rainbow River became part of my life. I, I was a teenager. I'd go down there with my guitar. I'd go swimming there. I got tubing floating down the river all the time, renting canoes and and just all kinds of things. And when I got older, I had a son of my own and nephews. I would um, take them to the river. We'd go fishing. I, I never went fishing, but I took them fishing and had some really good, really good memories. My sister Doreen, um, who has since passed away, I remember her taking me to a place very much like in this photograph or in this the painting. I'm working from a photograph. Um, she took me to a place like this. We went in a canoe and she wanted to make hot dogs. So we went to the side of the river and uh, she made hot dogs. It's fond, it's a good memory for me. And kind of fun, you know, she was kind of, uh, a, she's more of a wild person, I guess, than I was, but it was still fun. Another time, I, another memory I have from uh, the Rainbow River, again, this was when I was 17, so a long time ago. But I was down on the river, or near the river, on the edge, playing my guitar, probably wanting somebody to hear me, you know, probably trying to have an, 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 uh, an involuntary audience. Anyway, so I was just a young guy playing the guitar, singing songs, and some lady came up and she invited me to play at her teenage Christian group at a local, uh, for a local Baptist church. They had a a camping retreat they were doing near the river that Friday evening so she invited me to come and play so I did and I did not realize until I got there that the entire group was girls and so I was the only boy there and they were all about my age they were all you know 16 17 years old and so I'm playing they didn't care what I played they they didn't care so I was playing what I knew I knew Beatles songs I knew uh, Cat Stevens songs, I knew Paul Simon songs, and had some songs I wrote of my own. Anyway, while I'm singing by the campfire, I can hear one of the girls tell one of the other girls, if Larry wasn't here, we could go skinny dipping. Oh man, now I heard that, even though I was singing, and I'll tell you what, I'm almost 68 years old, and I still think of that moment right there. Because in my mind, I was thinking, well, don't let me stop you. So anyway, a couple of memories and a and, uh, quick video on, on pointillism. And there you go. That's pretty much the, the entire painting. You, you can see here where I have the red, the orange, the yellow, the green, the violet, the blue, the indigo. Indigo is kind of a dark, almost black purple. Okay, well, there you go. There's a quick add-on of uh, some highlights and some Spanish moss. And uh, here's the finished picture now. So, Okay, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, um, come back for more. Click like and subscribe, and I think you get a notification. I think that's how that works. And um, we'll, we'll do some more of these. If you, ha if you have any requests, if you want any real-time videos, I've done a few of them, but you know, some of these take 
like five hours to do. So um, I don't know if you want to sit through five hours. Okay, that's it. See you later. Bye.